Um, thanks very much for inviting me here today. Uh, the director, Madame Ambassador, the Ambassador of Italy, all the friends that uh, in this thing we should um, leaders that came here today. Uh, uh, I'm a journalist. It's still very uh, uh, funny for me when they call me a professor. And actually, at the dentist, when uh, the nurse comes, it's like, professor, professor, I keep reading my newspaper. <laughs> and then it's like, Mr. Rios, hey, that's me. Um, in uh, this, uh, my, my, my transition from being a journalist to being a scholar takes another uh, lecture about what's happening um, uh, in journalism. Um, the, the, very briefly, what I will try to uh, give you today uh, is a, a sense of what's going on in Italy, what has been going on in Italy, that this may be uh, somewhat, uh, somehow different from what you read on the New York Times or the Financial Times, The Economist, um, and not because they are wrong, they are actually right, but sometimes, but um, because a, the, the perspective from within the country is, is different. Um, one of the peculiar uh, uh, learning experience for me that I live uh, shuttling back and forth in the United States, it was the time when I would, it was impossible for me to land in New York City without uh, somebody asking me, how can you Italians elect such a bozo like Berlusconi? Um, and I had to go at length uh, uh, in explanations. And then, of course, I would uh, fly back to Rome. And then people ask me, how can the American elect such a bozo like President Bush? <laughs> and, uh, um, and I had to like skate on, on thin ice. It, to, make it, to make it very short, it, for the past 20 years, Italy has been divided by a, a cultural war. More than a political war, it was a cultural war. Berlusconi, Silvio Berlusconi, represented <coughs> um, what his uh, opponents would call a crass, materialistic, consumeristic, uh, non-traditionally, culturally uh, Italian world of TV, uh, mass consumptions, and then they've gone on and on with accusations of, of course, there is uh, crass parties and uh, uh, despicable uh, lifestyle. Uh, for the Berlusconi's uh, press and the Berlusconi's TV, the uh, left, the Italian left and the Italian world of uh, culture and uh, politics was uh, run by communists. They were like mm, uh, badly reformed communists and they were all um, intent in uh, ruining the modern uh, society in, uh, in Europe. It, it, it was impossible to, if you uh, have a look at the um, Berlusconi press for the past uh, 20 years, and good luck to you with that, <laughs> or if you uh, watch uh, the, the prize-winning <coughs> um, movie by the Italian leftist director Nanni Moretti, Caro Diario, that was very famous uh, at, at the Cannes Festival, won the Cannes Festival, where he, the hero is... The hero's life is like, how can I live in a country where on TV they show the um, uh, Berlusconi's uh, program? So the, the real, at the bottom line, trouble with the country was that two worlds were not talking to each other, and it was impossible on a political level, on a cultural level, on a mass media level, to open some negotiation or some dialogue between uh, them. That was then. Then something happens, and if, uh, Linda, you can show what happened, all of a sudden, a few years ago, Italians saw this on TV. You can see it on YouTube, if you like it. Um, Italians saw this on a TV program, run by the same channel. This is the, the most important Italian... Uh, look at this guy. You know this guy? Have you, have, you, have you know this guy? Have you seen this guy before? He's trying to win some money on this TV show. I've seen this guy somewhere before. And he has the answer, Matteo, says his name. He's winning, you know, he's wearing a jacket and a tie. He keeps winning, he won 50 million euros, it's like the equivalent of 50,000 euros today. Sono a livello dilettantistico in seconda categoria. Ho capito. Senta, cosa fa sì che un ragazzo come lei che potrebbe fare altre cose va invece a fare l'arbitro, a beccare? Eh? No, l'arbitro è una passione, è una cosa molto bella, mi piace molto. 
Che vuoi vedere dire? la soluzione? Vorrei vedere l'Antartide. Now it's time for the big di ghiaccio e un mare di navi. Il nostro ghiaccio. Basi con chiusi ships di snow. Ok, this is Matteo Renzi. E quando. 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 Fighting against Berlusconi and pilloring Berlusconi with slogans and uh, 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 the sense of their uh, dissatisfaction, he was actually joining a Berlusconi program in order to win money to buy a car. Um, I could say it's all, the, the, the lecture is over, and that's all you have to know about Italy, meaning that the political standing of uh, Matteo Renzi was that he represents a post-Berlusconian Italy, a generation of Italians that um, decided that living in a perennial uh, political campaign, a living in a perennial um, civil cultural war between the left and the right, the pro-Berlusconi, the anti-Berlusconi, they were fed up with it, and that nobody was taking care of the country. In the meantime, unemployment, uh, lack of innovation, uh, the digital gap, Uh, the gap between South and North were becoming enormous. The moral corruption of the, uh, the country was going uh, nowhere, and uh, the public administration needed to be uh, reformed. The problems of the country were there, and nobody would take care of them, while the two uh, uh, tribes were fighting each other. Uh, the, idea, the idea that uh, Italy had to move to a different uh, um, political conversation is perfectly depicted by the guy that you saw there. Now the problem is that, uh, that we are trying to discuss today, can he make it? Can he make it? And how can he make it? Uh, with what co uh, political coalition and in what political uh, direction? And what coalition does he need uh, uh, to, to, to make it? As you know, uh, uh, as you know uh, Matteo Renzi was the mayor of um, Florence. It's very easy to run Florence. Pretty much, is it on the record or off the record? <laughs> Let's have a very small section uh, of the record. Nothing happened in, uh, since they chased Dante out of the country and then they had uh, Renaissance, nothing happened in uh, uh, Florence. Uh, Um, with the exception, my son, my, my American son would say that they invented Negroni in the 1920s, the cocktail Negroni. But apart from that, to run Florence is very easy because it's a rich, established city that runs on its own. Okay, so the mayor of, uh, uh, of Florence is like the director of the Louvre Museum. It's something, it's a plum job. But then he decided to run to win the primaries of his own party, and that wasn't, that was the far west. He was passing from Uh, uh, um, a museum to the far west. He lost once. He won the second time. And he won on a platform of uh, Italy is different from what the newspapers write about. We are not a country that is divided in two. We are unified and we can move on uh, together. Um, I wasn't surprised when he lost the first time. I was very surprised when he won the second time. Because it, it meant that eventually the left had Uh, mature to uh, the reality after being uh, for so many years locked in their own propaganda. The, then, in a very Florentinian uh, coup, he got to uh, win the um, prime minister position from his predecessor, Enrico Letta. And, uh, and in a way, a, a lot of people within his own party blame him, why did he do that? Uh, I think that was a very natural move. There is an ambitious young politician that wins the primaries. He wants the job. He, he's not waiting uh, in the sidelines to be uh, simmered uh, under a low fire. He wants the job and takes the challenge. Uh, his cabinet uh, is a very um, photogenic uh, cabinet. 
but at the same time is filled up with stars. Uh, the uh, Minister for Reforms, Mariela Naboski, uh, uh, she's having a very, very, very nasty time in the Italian press because she's beautiful and blonde and strikingly beautiful and strikingly blonde. At the same time, uh, um, she's an intimidating uh, young lawyer that knows her stuff very well, and I would never uh, be on the other side of a negotiating table uh, with her. Um, the, the former Minister of uh, <coughs> uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, Signora Mogherini, has just been appointed um, uh, Mrs. Pesh instead of uh, Lady Ashton, and we wish her well, and we'll see how will she uh, fare. And, uh, and there are, like many other uh, young Italians that represent this uh, post Berlusconian um, uh, generation. I think, for example, of uh, Signora Scani. She's a 26 year old member of the Italian Parliament from Umbria dealing with digital education and, um, and working on a, system, on a new system for digital uh, education. When you think of Italy, you don't exactly think about a 26 year old uh, lady uh, dealing with digital education, but that's what uh, the energy that was in the country, because even outside. Uh, uh, the political world. You have uh, managers like Andrea Guerra of Luxottica, they managed to snatch quite a few brands from uh, uh, the American market, or uh, John El Khan, the new leader uh, of Fiat, that managed to uh, uh, sign a deal with uh, Chrysler, or even uh, the spokesperson of Matteo Renzi, uh, Filippo Sensi, that is a blogger. He's a blog. I mean, he was like uh, 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 a real world blogger uh, with all the nerdiness of a real blogger. And one, now you find him at the G8 or the G20 uh, uh, representing the voice of Italy. So I'm not saying at all that Renzi created the energy. The energy was actually there, but Renzi managed to plug it in. Renzi managed to tell this generation of people that wanted to change the country, follow me and we'll go. Uh, what was very interesting is that uh, the country seemed stuck in a, a, you know, a perennial discontent. Uh, the um, Beppe Grillo, uh, famously the, the maverick former comedian uh, of the Five Stars Movement, famously won 25 uh, percent, that is quite a lot in a country of 60 million people, 25 percent of the votes at the uh, political election in 2013. And um, why? Because you run on a platform, they are all terrible guys, they steal from you, stick with me, and we leave the euro, we leave Europe, uh, and we'll be um, a lonely country that will be uh, run um, without uh, TGV, without high-speed trains, without technology, and it's, it's like some dream of a rural old-time Italy. Um, according to the uh, um, uh, scholars, uh, Mr. Grillo uh, was there to stay, um, and uh, he would have eventually won uh, the seat of being a prime minister. And I never bought it. I never bought it, mostly because uh, um, I've been an Italian most of my life, and, uh, and uh, Italians have pretty much, if you read Dante, they have pretty much every <laughs> defects and vices in the world, but they are a country of common sense. The real Italian, not the Italians that you see on TV, but the Italians that you meet at your family uh, uh, lunch or dinner at Christmas, uh, uh, it's a guy that sticks to the family, sticks to his job, or a lady that sticks to the family or sticks to her job. Uh, so they voted for Grillo because they wanted to, as the Americans say, throw the bums out. They wanted to give a sign of change. But when they have in Renzi somebody that actually seemed that they could send the protest in a rational, not in an irrational way, they, at the European election of the, uh, 2014, they gave 40% of the vote to Renzi and 20% of the vote to Grillo. Still, still a very, very interesting <laughs> Uh, amount of votes and still a populist rage not to be underrated. But while in France we are seeing uh, Madame Le Pen now <laughs> running ahead of President Hollande in the polls, we don't see this in Italy. And uh, I 
I'm glad that uh, uh, Mr. Renzi managed to do that. Uh, and now for the art part. And now for the art part. We have a photogenic, strong, smart, uh, sexy, digital-oriented uh, young prime minister with his um, um, great uh, cabinet. Can they make it? The task that they have ahead is daunting, and uh, I, am very, uh, I am very worried. Uh, Linda, you tell me when my time is over, okay? Uh, because it's an old country, so we can go on and on forever. Um, um, Italians need reforms. This is like what you read today and yesterday and the day before <coughs> on the Economist, the Financial Times. And, but the, the, what, what I would like to share with you is like why they do not vote for reforms? Why do they do not implement reform? Uh, Berlusconi promised reform in 1984 and uh, won, and then he didn't deliver. Mr. Prodi, a very decent uh, uh, politician and human being, and a personal friend, won in 2006 and in 1996, promising uh, reforms. And of course, uh, Premier Monti and of course, Premier Letta, there are two smart and savvy and decent uh, uh, technocrats. They promise reforms. Why do we eventually um, do not implement reforms? And my answer to that, that may be wrong, is that Italians actually do not want reform. Do not want reform. But they, they do not want reform because the way the country lived, and living in Italy uh, from the rubble of World War II to the Dolce Vita of the 60s to <coughs> the 70s and 80s, despite, of course, the ugly face of terrorism, was a wonder because you had freedom, you had a um, welfare system, you had uh, culture, you had the family uh, network, you had Mr. Umberto Eco and the other writers, you had the great public TV. It was a great country to live in, and a lot of people didn't like globalization when globalization came, didn't like the global market when the global market came, didn't like that our graduates have to compete with graduates in Shanghai. Why do our kids have to do homework and math every day instead of playing football to, to compete with the kids in Hong Kong? Um, the, our companies, uh, Martin Wolf of the uh, Financial Times is very fond of the Italian um, uh, uh, small and medium-sized companies. There are five millions. It's an impressive network, the second manufacturer in Europe, the sixth manufacturer in the world. But why are they in trouble now since the big crisis of 2008? Because two-thirds of them are stuck in Italy. They don't have access to the global market. And of course, they suffer of the lack of Italian demand because the Italians are spending less and less. And so all the companies, despite the great goods that they produce that are stuck to the domestic uh, uh, market, they languish. The companies that have access to the global market, they are exporting, they are doing very well. There are districts in the northwest and northeast of Italy that are still growing faster than Germany, faster than Germany. And uh, uh, so the problem for Renzi will be how give Italian companies access to the global market, to all of them, how bring, to bring them in the digital market, how to convince their uh, owners, sometimes family-oriented, that a manager should be, should be uh, more than uh, 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 the, the, the old nonno, the old grandfather still running the, co the, the, the company. So what happened in Italy is something that, again, you won't read in the newspaper, and actually if you utter it is allowed, uh, you, they, will, uh, they will actually stone you, that the politicians after the Grillo, after the um, Crusader campaign, so, so many uh, journalists, uh, after the, the public opinion getting really disaffected, uh, the politicians eventually changed. If you look at the, a picture of the Italian uh, um, cabinet, you don't see people that you've seen 20 years ago. You don't. But if you look at who runs the Italian economy, you see people that are older than me and make no mistake, I'm kind of old. That's a tragedy. I mean, you're not supposed to. You have to, you have to uh, mourn with me. Uh, um, the unions are stuck in the past. The unions 
are run by people that think like this was the 1975. Uh, the universities, uh, they are um, upset that when we have the uh, international ranking, the Italian universities do not make it to the, the, to the top. And instead of thinking like, why um, are we not winning? Uh, they do like the Italian uh, football fan when the Azzurri, the national team, doesn't win. They blame the referee. <laughs> and Renzi, as you see, was, he was a referee. Um, the media is to blame. This is a Catholic country and a former altar boy, so mea culpa, mea culpa. The media is to blame because we didn't do... Uh, uh, we, it was much easier for us to, to go after a blame the politicians game because we would sell copies, we would have um, TV audience, we would have clicks on our website. Instead of saying, why are you not electing politicians that are keen to jump start the reform? Why you are um, opposing reform in your um, works uh, in your union, in your uh, lab, in your uh, shop, when uh, uh, Minister Bersani in 2006 tried to um, uh, open up the Italian taxi uh, system that, is, that was before Uber. It was really entrenched by people from the same village running the same uh, company forever. Uh, it, was, it turned out very ugly. And I know that if you put this on the web, I won't be able to get a taxi cab in Rome or in Milan anymore. But it would turn ugly because the taxi drivers simply start beating up reporters on the street and eventually the politician folded. So, he, of course, we need leaders able to jumpstart reforms, but we need a, an Italian country that accept, accept reforms. Um, you know the numbers, and I'm not. Uh, after lunch is never a great time for, <coughs> for um, uh, numbers. But ju just ju a few figures. Economic growth has been stagnant in Italy for a generation. Pretty much, my dad managed to uh, be productive in the world, and I failed. Uh, and employment stands at around 13.6 percent. Then there is a lot of talk, of course, the black economy or not but uh, is 46% for people of employment age who are under 25 years old. And to me, I was born and raised in Sicily, uh, um, even more staggering is 60% uh, for women under 30 in the South, 60%. This means there is an entire generation that doesn't um, work and um, very soon will be unemployable because very soon will be older than 35 without having, uh, never having get any steady job. Uh, in the first three months of 2014, the economy contracted by 0.1%. It will be stagnant for the rest of the year. Uh, and of course, we still drag a 134% debt to GDP uh, ratio that is making our borrowing uh, very, very uh, difficult. Um, the Italian pessimist will tell you we will be buried under a, a, a 1,100 billion euros of uh, public debt. The Italian optimist will tell you, yeah, but we boast 9,000 uh, billion of public of private wealth, and the Italian family is not in debt like the American family. There is Italians do not carry uh, private uh, private um, debt. So who is right and who is wrong? Um, they are both right or they are both wrong, uh, because of course we have to. Um, create a, a, an economy and administration that doesn't add every year to the public debt. We have to start paying taxes in, uh, a, a, with a more solidarity because in, in the Italian fiscal system works this way. If you pay taxes, you pay too much taxes, more than anybody else in the world. So a lot of people do not pay taxes and they say that's the, the best fiscal reform. So. Uh, Renzi has to do two things, to reduce the, the, the tax burden on people that actually pay taxes while luring in tax dodgers and tax evaders from, uh, from, the, from the dark. So far, our prime minister has concentrated on giving a, a fiscal break to the uh, most um, 
backward segment of our uh, uh, families is like an 80 uh, euros uh, fiscal break that seem uh, small, and is small, but had a huge, huge uh, symbolic effect. Is trying to reform the Senate and to uh, make our political system a, a, a little faster. Is trying to um, have a better and fairer uh, electoral law from the one that we are um, enjoying uh, now. And then uh, is negotiating through the uh, economy uh, uh, minister, uh, Mr. Piercarlo Paduan, that is a respected uh, economist, some break from Europe in order to <coughs> uh, um, have a less uh, stern uh, austerity um, wall around uh, around him. Um, clearly, and you are all uh, foreign affairs experts, so I don't want to uh, um, bother you with that. Clearly, the atmosphere has changed a lot in uh, in Europe, in Germany, France, uh, England, or whatever is left of England after uh, next week. Uh, they all agree that the no, 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 no. Uh, economy of the past few years doesn't make any sense anymore, and we have to allow uh, the the, uh, the local economies to uh, uh, spend a bit and to um, uh, create to create jobs. I don't think, nevertheless, I don't think that uh, uh, the solution for um, Matteo Renzi comes from Europe. No matter what uh, Mr. Draghi in Frankfurt and on, no matter what Mrs. Merkel in uh, uh, Berlin, um, how much slack they cut for him, uh, they will give him breathing space. They will give him um, ground so that he can maneuver a little better. But eventually, the destiny of Italy is in the hands of Italians. The Italians have to make a decision like they have done for centuries in the past. If they want to live in today's world, um, they have to produce cars, produce ties, uh, produce services, go to school according to the rules. Again, school, for example. School uh, is the, a sector of the public administration that involves 10 million Italians every day, from people who work in school to people that attend the schools. And um, we spend a lot of money. The money is not spent um, rationally. Uh, sometimes the teachers are heroes, and they really do a lot for the kids. Sometimes the, the teachers are slackers. And uh, the hero and the slacker get exactly the same money, exactly the same treatment, and they have exactly the same perspective of uh, career. And of course, this has to change if you want to improve the performance of our of our kids. Um, so the real challenge, uh, uh, new challenge, the real challenge for Matteo Renzi uh, is to convince the country that um, the bitter pill today um, will make the ice cream sweeter tomorrow. As you know, the economist, the <clears throat> Excuse me. Depicted Mr. Renzi licking his cone uh, on his cover. I guess you know the two T's. And uh, a, a spokesperson that is really a, an amazing uh, quality guy in terms of communication um, played what we, in terms of communication, call a judo move to the economist. And he simply uh, bought ice cream for his boss, and he went around licking his ice cream, saying like what me, me worry. Um, and this is great. And this is, says everything that is right about Mr. Renzi. Young, smart, move. The economist tried to corner him, and he corners the economy, OK? But as a very good friend of mine says, that ice cream that they were leaking is made by Grom. That is a quite brilliant uh, Italian label. And uh, it costs on the street of Milan 3.5 euros, and it costs to you, if you want to buy a kilo, um, something like between 25 and 30 euros. And uh, a cone, an ice cream cone that costs 3.5 euros means for a dad uh, 12 euros of uh, ice cream on uh, Sunday. And that's something that 
Today, a lot of Italian families cannot afford. So gimmicks are great when you have to deal with journalists in the, the domain of public opinion. And so far, Mr. Renzi has been fantastic vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the populist and beating vis-a-vis -vis the populist and uh, uh, taking the country together once again and implementing his image as an energetic young leader. But the real challenge is tomorrow, um, having not just one grown making ice, great ice cream, but having a whole country being able of having uh, innovative companies. And to me, most important than anything else, to have that cone instead of us costing 3.5 euros, maybe costing 2 euros, or and having a lot of moms and dads that can buy ice cream on Sundays. Thank you.